Good day, everyone, and well, welcome to this Investor Intel interview. My name is Mario Jolay. Pleasure to always see you every day. Today, we have the pleasure to have with us Mr. Mike Drewing from Medex Health Development Company. Good day, Mike, and welcome to the show. Hi, Mario. Nice to see you again, my friend. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mike, uh, first question for you. Can you walk us to uh, the latest development that Medex had uh, just recently? So what we've done, Mario, is <clears throat> our shareholders, we listen very carefully to them and their whole con conversation with us has been, show us the revenue, let's see the traction. So as of November 17th, if uh, shareholders go back, they'll notice a flurry of releases showing them exactly that. So what we're doing now with our model to make it work more efficiently for everybody is we're, we're putting out a lot more of the, you know, the traction we're getting on the revenue side, we're explaining it, and one little caveat to it, a lot of the stuff we've done in the past, we went back and reviewed, and we're doing these contracts. COVID gave us a chance to reflect on how we could be better at communicating to our shareholders, one. And secondly, how can we be more efficient in terms of how we get our customers up and running in that? So we spent a lot of time on that part of the operational efficiency. So now what we do is we go into a partnership, we do a pilot. That's paid for. I want to be really clear about that. So we do a pilot, we run it anywhere from 60 to 90 days. And what that does is it allows both the, the partner and us to understand each other's business model. And then at the end of it, it turns into a commercial contract, which gives us an idea of what the partner's like. So we both have to measure each other's endpoints and say, okay, you delivered what you said, we delivered what we said, this will make a good commercial arrangement. So it stops us doing those sort of uh, engagements with like big blue sky in them, and then all of a sudden we, you know, we run into some problems and it, it, it looks like we're not doing our job correctly. So we wanted to get that corrected. And that's how we're doing it now. So if you go back into from, I think, in November 17th, somewhere around there, there's a host of uh, announcements we've done, Marielle. And all of those are all pilot driven, paid for. And now we're starting to turn some of those into commercial contracts. And I think people will start to see a lot more of those uh, coming and they'll be able to track those on our on our website now. Mike, uh, can you talk about Medicare? Right. So Medicare was a deal we just recently did. And in the Medicare transaction, um, this was this was the first physician based transaction we did. So now we have sort of three channels. We have the pharmacy channel. We have the medical clinic channel. And now we're, this was the first one we did direct physician owned. So this was a physician. She has a small community of uh, actually 5000 patient roster, but she services high, uh, highly Arabic community. And this was an excellent opportunity for us to go into an underserved community, be able to allow her to gain access to the dermatological uh, community services that are, are there. And it's also directly connected to a pharmacy. So with the addition of the HD camera that we have, this allows her to take any other kind of skin ailments, inflammatory skin diseases, and then uh, take uh, any kinds of the um, treatments that are pharmacology treatments into the pharmacy. So it's a unique model for us. <clears throat> These kind of things, are, they're part of the three-legged stool we have, you know, the medical clinics, uh, the pharmacies direct, and then the, uh, the phys physician paid. So, uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. We're pretty happy about that. We've got lots more of those on the pipe coming. Can't wait to see more development on it. Uh, Mike, um, uh, can you also talk about uh, Brazil? What's going on? The... Uh, so Br Brazil was a classic example of what I was talking about earlier. We went into the Brazil market. We still think we have a very excellent partner down in Brazil. COVID hit Brazil very hard. And the problem with that was, I mean, it was really under shutdown. Anybody who's been watching the news knows that. We're just coming out of that malaise of Brazil. We've been, nothing's gone in terms of um, problematic with Brazil in terms of that, other than we couldn't get into the, to the uh, um, ease of access locations. So we're now starting to reboot uh, that uh, now that the COVID has simmered down enough that allow us to do it. We've been very active on the training program with the hospitals. We've been going into some of the newer hospitals. We've done a lot of training down there. So I expect in the next couple quarters, we'll see a lot more business out of Brazil. So Brazil, uh, I think everybody is worried about that, you know, that was a false flag, but it isn't. It's just a matter of we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start to manage that a lot more uh, aggressively now that uh, it's opened back up in the economy. Uh, Mike? My last question for you, uh, basically, uh, what can we expect for shareholders of uh, Medex in 2022? Um, expect some, yes, uh, rise in sales. Uh, can we start to see, think about seeing maybe a positive EBITDA by the end of the quarter four of uh, 2022? 
to? Yeah, so we've become, one of the things is people have been very patient or feel that we haven't delivered on the traction side. And I think that's a very, that's very authentic. Um, I think what we're going to see this year is our team is deeply focused. We have made a commitment to get 158 scopes out into the first quarter. If we do that, that starts to turn our numbers towards cash flow positive, And that's really good. And we're on track for those numbers to come in. And so this year, we've got a target number uh, with our scopes to get us into highly profitable range. And um, I will say with the MOUs developing the commercialized contracts and the commitments to that, I think everybody will see a lot of revenue traction. And I think the way we're going to measure that now to help people out with that, Mario, is we're just building the back end of the site right now. But people will be able to go on to a map that we have under the get scan part on our website, see the number of locations populate. We'll start to put how many devices that we're putting into each market. So we'll put down a tabulation poll that'll say, you know, this quarter we opened up 158 scopes. That way people know we're on track. And then we'll show the number of e-consults we've conducted. And we make about $15 minimum on those e-consults. So people will be able to do the math and kind of get a nine on the revenue trend. So I think we'll be far more transparent this year. That's one of the things our shareholders have, have demanded. We'll be a lot more uh, transparent. So uh, I think we're going to have a year of lots of traction and lots of revenue finally. <laughs> finally. So I think everybody will be pretty happy about that. Hey, thank you very much, Mike. It was very nice to have you today on Investor Intel interview. Just want to remind you, MedX, MDX on TSX Venture. and. Um, Thank you very much to all of you. Merci. Merci. Thanks.